Welcome back to Gold Fries. In this video, we'll be looking at the new AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. I will be browsing my tablet a lot because there's just uh, many points to cover and I do not want to miss anything out. However, I cannot promise that this video will be smooth because I'm trying to present with all the text here, so there might be choppy bits. And yes, it took days for me to test out all these, um, to, to test the various configurations to find out the details. And if you like this kind of content, I hope you consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't. Now, let's begin. Starting off, the price. The Ryzen 5 5600G in Malaysia retails at RM1239, which is a little lower than the Ryzen 5 5600X that is at $1349. So, can this 5600G uh, keep up or replace the 5600X? Well, yes and no. When it comes to productivity uh, workloads, as in multi-core workload that is, um, it actually performs very, very slightly better due to the slightly higher base clock. However, when it comes to gaming, as in pushing frame rates, it is of no match to the 5600X because the 5600X has more L3 cache and has higher boost clocks. This time around, we'll start with thermals first and after that, we'll go to the rest of the details such as the various configurations and the benchmarks. In fact, you'll get benchmarks charts along the way. So for this video, I'll be using the MSI Mac B550 Tomahawk and the memory kit is the XPG D60G while the graphics card is the AMD RX 6900 XT reference model. Let's begin. Thermals wise, the stock cooler is sufficient for gaming but for multi-core workloads, the 5600G peaks at 90 degrees Celsius and the clock speed hovers at 4.12 to 4.15 GHz. I changed the cooler to the Thermorite AXP90R and the difference is massive. The temperature peaked at only 83 degrees Celsius and the speed was higher at 4.17 to 4.2 GHz. And this is running the Blender BMW CPU test. And from the results, I saw 4 seconds improvement, which is actually a lot just by changing the stock cooler to the Thermorite AXP90R and compared to the 5600X using the same cooler, it actually outperformed the 5600X by just 2 seconds. When it comes to video encoding, I use the Vinci Resolve 17 to encode a 4K 3 minute video and the difference between the 5600G and the 5600X again is very minimal. So you could actually settle for the less costly 5600G and get very slightly faster encoding time. The Ryzen 5 5600G and the 5600X are very efficient processors. So when, it's, uh, when I'm gaming on it, I saw 70 to 80 watts from the wall draw. And when I did the B Blender BMW CPU test, multi-core workload, the wall draw comes to just about 100 watts. Very good. When it comes to gaming, I'll have to disappoint you guys because the 7 GPU cores on the 5600G it is just about the performance of a GT 1030 compared to my GTX 1050. The 1050 um, performs about double the onboard graphics on the 5600G. Now let's talk about memory. I use the motherboard default, which is 2666 MHz CL20. And I also use the XMP for the memory kit, which is 3600 CL14. Running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p lower settings, you can see that the average frame rate is better with the faster memory. 36 against 30 average FPS. For the multi-core workload test, I'm surprised. The 2666 MHz versus the 3600 MHz CL14 resulted in no difference when it comes to the time to complete the task. Allocating more VRAM for the GPU does not improve the performance. Here, I compare 2 gigs versus 8 gigs, and the performance is the same. However, you have to note that the more memory you allocate, the less system memory you get. For example, if it's running at 2 gigs and you have 16 gigs, it has 14 gigs left. However, if you allocate 8 gigs and you have 16 gigs of memory, you have only 8 gigs left. So, take note of that. 
for the general simple games and all, all and all those two gigs is more than sufficient so whether or not to go four gigs or eight gigs it depends on the software you're using for example video uh, video editing software the certain functionality may require more vram so you have to try and if ever there's an error message say there's not enough vram then perhaps that's when you tweak the settings lastly we have games so the 5600g is not as fast as the 5600x and in fact based on my test as you can see here the performance it's behind the 5600x it's about 87 percent of the 5600x at least based on the numbers i have even the 3600 xt slightly edges the 5600 g on average however if you are playing games like say genshin impact valorant dota 2 or any other game that does not uh, demand much of the graphic system the 5600g will do just fine check out the recordings i have for the games <laughs> One enemy remaining. 30 seconds left. Spike down A. You are a boulder. I am a mountain. Right, so yes, the 5600G, it is a great processor, lower price and for productivity uh, as in multi-core workload purpose, it can match the 5600X. However, if you're looking to push frame rates, the 5600X is still better. So that's all from me for this one. I hope you found the content educational, informative, or even entertaining. And if you do, I hope you consider to subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And also, check out the contents at the side. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.